Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Water Road Adventures. As you can see right behind me, I have my Garmin 93SV Eagle Map. And we're going to do the unboxing of the Life Scope. I already have the head units, but we're just going to get the Life Scope opened up and see what it is and get it installed for you guys. I'm not sure how we're going to install it yet. It's going to go on my kayak. I'm also going to make it so it's interchangeable so I can use it for ice fishing too. Let's get into the unboxing. Pretty excited about this. This is the battery. It's 18 amp hour. And this is the charger. And we'll open that later. Right now I'm really excited opening up this this box right here. This is actually a pretty heavy unit. It probably weighs probably close to five pounds right here. I didn't expect that. Alright, so when you first open it up see the serial number here and everything this is the black box let's take the black box out uh, this is the heavy piece right here it's probably weighs at least my guess is probably four maybe five pounds or maybe not that heavy but it's it's up there it's pretty heavy let's get all your your ground, your power, got your network, XDCR, and it's the GLS 10 live scope. Really nice, real nice piece. Let's go ahead and set this to the side. This is probably the most expensive piece right here for the live scope system. Without this, you cannot run your live scope. Here we have, looks like hardware for your mounting. This looks like the mounting for for the for the trolling motor. This looks like it's an extension cable. It's got a fuse in here you know, as well. Or this might be the power. This must be the power cable. You got more cables, more mounting hardwares. So this probably mounts onto your boat or your kayak or whatever. I don't think I'll be needing these parts. And right here is the masterpiece, part of the masterpiece right here, guys. This is the transducer right here. Nicely wrapped up. And this piece is going to go on a pole. And it's going to go on my kayak. I'm thinking this is going to go right here on my kayak on my left side. I'm going to it's going to have a pole going down. And this is where it's going to go, just like this. So you can turn it whichever way you need to. So you got more cables. These are the caps for the end, like these. Some more hardware. And then you have your extensive manual. So that's pretty much about it. But for now, I'm gonna try to figure out where I'm gonna mount the black box. I'm thinking probably get in a board or something for under the seat. So this piece will be mounted under the seat 
and it'll be facing this way so all my cords are coming out through the back. Alright, so this is how I'm thinking about hooking it up. I was thinking about putting the black box underneath the seat. I'm gonna try to see if I can find some, some type of poly board to put this on, mount it on so it's a little higher so it doesn't get wet in case there's water that does get in my kayak. And it's gonna go right under this seat just like this. Somehow, I'm gonna figure a way how to strap it down without screwing into the hull of the boat. And the wires that's gonna come out from under here, it's gonna go underneath this, the seat risers for the Hobie kayak. And the wire for the transducer is gonna go to the left side. And all the wires that, that needs to go to the power and to the locator will go on the right side, like that. It's gonna come out right here somehow. Come underneath this little little basket right here. It's gonna come up here and hook up to the back of the Garmin. So that's the that's the idea that I have. But we'll see once we start getting everything in and go from there. Hopefully we get all the parts that we need soon and we can start putting it on and take it out before snow hits. This is by Amped Outdoors. This is the charger. Here's the 3 amp charger. This is what's needed to charge these lithium batteries. You can use any other charger, but these are highly recommended. These are specifically made for charging lithium batteries. So, it's very self explanatory. Just plug it in. Alligator clips. And then you can actually clip this to the battery so you can have easy connector for the battery. Let's take a look at the battery real quick. Pretty nice size battery. I decided to go with the 18 amp because uh, I wanted a little bit more lightweight. The 30 amp would have been a lot nicer but I gotta consider all the weight and everything. For the live scope, for the ice fishing package, if you set up everything, it's probably close to 20, between anywhere between 20 to 30 pounds. So, I mean, it gets pretty heavy. And uh, even on my kayak, it will get pretty heavy too. This, so all, all these extra added weights with all my tackle gear and everything. So, I'm trying to stay lightweight as much as I can. But yeah, this is pretty self explanatory 18 amp hours by Amped Outdoors. All right, guys, it has been a few days now. Just got some more parts in. Still got a few more parts to go pick up. I'm actually picking up my shuttle from Bass King later. So, I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna hook up everything yet. But I do want to hook up everything externally. So that means all, all the wires is gonna be on the outside instead of everything being on the inside. I thought about getting another life scope, but with the price that they are, it's kind of super expensive. So this is how I'm gonna do it so I can use it for both winter and summer. So I decided to get the ice hole power box. That's gonna be powering up my, my life scope. But yeah, let's take a look at it here real quick. It's got the 12 volt on top for like a cigarette lighter. It's got the two USB, well it's actually a type C and a USB port right here. This is your on and off button. Let's take a look at the inside. All right. So it comes with some hardware, maybe extra parts, maybe that's what it is. Comes with an ISO power sticker, I love stickers. Velcro, extra fuses, and instructions. So, pretty cool. But yeah, everything looks very nicely wired. Very quality wired. I've done some wiring in my in my past too, so yeah, I like I like how they wired everything. Everything's nice and tight. 
red wires or with red wires, black wires with black wires and everything. Everything is really well organized. So yeah, I like this. This is the SAE port for charging. So this is how the battery is going to go in. I'm thinking, let's see this. Let's take a look at these wires. It actually goes in there pretty snug. So you got the red wire going right there. It's got a 10 amp fuse. Let's close that up so it's protected. Let's move this protective cover on the terminal. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Black to black, red to red. And there it goes. Now everything should power up. This power is the main part. So right now it's showing that there's 13.1 volts in there, which is pretty nice. It's lights. Not sure what this power is yet, but the one in the middle is the main power, shuts everything off, and the one all the way on the on this side is to power on the lights. Very nice. I think that this would be a real good spot for it, so I can still access it externally. I could turn it on and off right here. And hopefully I can just hook up the black box to the SAE port and have it powered that way. That way so I don't have to mess with any other cords besides the transducer and the cords that goes into the locator, which is up in front. So I'm pretty excited about that. And this each crate will still stay right here. This is the short arm, the double socket, one and a half inch. And also got the the tough claw hustle by ram mount and the, the pole that's going to hold the life scope is actually going to go right here so I'm actually picking that up from Bass King as well well it's been a couple of days just got this piece in this is actually the cutting board that I'm going to be using for the base for the black box Move this box out of the way but this is a I believe it was an 18 by 20 or something like that it doesn't say on here but I'll link this down in the description I got this from Amazon and this is actually gonna sit underneath here just like that then the black box is gonna sit on top of it but I'm also thinking about getting a one of those plastic storage bins to put the black box in so this is kind of what I'm thinking, to get in a box something like this that just holds some of my decals that I get in, some of the extra lures. So they just dump this out real quick over here. So I was thinking about putting it right here. And I kind of have the black box hooked up right now, but I was thinking about screwing it in. It's going to go this way, but it's going to sit in here. I'm gonna cut slots for these wires. I'm gonna screw it in like this and then put a silicone around the edges that way so no water gets inside or underneath the container. So that's what I was thinking. So this will protect the black box from from uh, being hit because I do put a lot of stuff underneath my seat too. Sometimes I throw rods or tackle boxes underneath me so it's easier to access. So that's one idea. I think this would be a perfect box too. Let me take these connections off so we can better see. When you guys are taking these off, be very careful you guys don't bend any of these connectors. I always protect them when they're not in use. It's an expensive piece, so I gotta take care of it. So basically, it's gonna be like this, it's gonna be screwed in through the storage box into the one inch HDPE cutting board. The reason why I went with this HDE cutting board because it's a lot cheaper than buying an actual sheet because they usually come in four feet by eight feet 
and that's usually like a hundred some bucks so this is actually probably the the best way to do this get in one of these cutting boards and drilling through it to place it like this so once I cut the slots in I can put it right through cover it up like this so it's protected so I'll be under my seat just like that so that's the basic idea of it and this is the Bass King tripod if I want this to move around I have to figure out a way how to hook this up so I can move it around because it pivots on this little piece right here so that's where it pivots there's one thing that they don't show you on the pictures or I even I tried looking on YouTube for reviews and I couldn't find anything so I didn't know how it pivots on here I thought it was a tube inside a tube where it pivots but uh, this is actually the pivot point right here so you could turn it around but I'm gonna be taking this piece off for this application for the kayak application and it's gonna go here and for now it's not gonna be able to move unless I kind of loosen it up but then I can kind of move it actually that'd be fine too I, I would think but since it's a small watercraft anyways I'm not worried about too much about the direction because I could just easily turn my kayak and I'm fishing mostly in front of me anyways so I think this will be fine one thing that I wasn't sure if this pole was going to be sturdy enough but it's actually it's actually a very sturdy pole I thought with it being carbon it might be too light I thought it would be too light and too flimsy but it's actually very strong I mean, I'm using a lot of force right now to try to bend it and it's really not bending so but yeah, I think I, I think this be this pole work really nice, and I'll go into more detail too when I install this on the shuttle. Okay, so with the bass kink pole, it comes with this piece right here. This is where you mount the live scope unit. And you just use the hardware that came with the live scope. Put the washer in, and just screw it in pretty simple yeah there is grooves on the other side of this too so you can so it won't move quick disconnect let's take the take the cotter pin out put it in This should work. Actually, it looks like I'm going to be needing another washer because it's not enough. The bolt is actually—it's actually too long. I do say that I did come with a rubber washer too, so I'm just going to use that. like that and it looks like I can run it prospectively too so I gotta do it just turn it this way just gotta turn it this way and tighten this and I'll I'm running it prospectively on my kayak all right guys this is what it looks like as I mentioned I'm gonna be taking this this off for when I use it on my kayak all I gotta do is just loosen some bolts right here on the top and he just slides slides out and then I can put this metal piece and this handle piece back in and again the way I have it hooked up I'm not going to be able to spin it I could probably spin it this way but that's, I think that's going to wear some parts out so I'm just going to leave it facing forward like this Because I'm on my kayak, I can turn it the kayak real easily, so I don't have to worry about looking to see if there's fish on the side or not. And my, I'm usually casting towards the front, anyways. 
So, otherwise, yeah, I think this is going to work out pretty good. I think I'm going to need quarter 20s. Looks like it's going to be quarter 20s, stainless steel. And I'm going to need at least, I'm thinking at least an inch, inch and a half bolts. It's actually an inch and a quarter. And it looks like it does give me plenty of bite. So I think it should be fine. And the way I'm going to be screwing this into here is I'm going to be tapping it so I can just screw right into the board. And hopefully the board is uh, strong enough for tapping. And I don't have to worry about making a hole all the way through the board. If I do do that, then I'll probably countersink it from the other side so I can put a nut on. But yeah, we'll figure that out as we go. Alright, so I went to the store, grabbed a tap and drill bit combo, some lock washers, flat washers, and some stainless steel machine screws. I got them in half an inch and one and a quarter inch. The half an inch, just gonna drill in the corners to put this on here so it's secured. And then the one and a quarter inch is gonna secure the black box to this whiteboard. I'm gonna tap it so I'll just screw it in. So let's get started. I think it's gonna go right around here. When you're tapping, you want to go as slow as possible. You don't want to break the the tap because these do break easily. So once it's tapped, it's just screw in easily, just like that. I'm just making this first one. Okay, so that's secured, and I can go ahead and drill out all the others. Alright, once I have all my four holes drilled, I'm just going to put a screw on each corner, just two of them for now, so I can um, get the holes for the black box. It's going to go just like this. This way I can mark it. And then drill again, so I can take it apart and clean it up a little bit, get all these burrs off, and then go from there. gonna get them started make sure they didn't move now I have to finish drilling now next up take these two off it is very chilly out here, guys. I just gotta finish tapping the rest of these holes. That is it. You can take air holes and blow out all these little debris in here. I don't have the air holes right now. So I just uh, blew into it. Should be good enough. 
14 by 11 by 3 and a quarter and these were about 8 bucks each so luckily I had a couple and I probably don't even need washers and lock nuts but I'm going to use it anyways so I'll prevent it from coming out just match up the holes screw it in I'm just going to use screw it in by hand Oh, so I don't strip the holes that I just tapped. <sighs> All right, that's it. Now I just gotta pop the holes over here for the cables, and I should be all set. So when I ordered the ice hole power box, it came with some Velcro. I just cut it in half and I'm just going to tape it right here. I don't know how strong it's going to be. I already cleaned the surface. about there looks even okay that seems to hold it from going back and forth and now it seems like it kind of seesaw so I just got to put something in here to prevent it from seesawing right now they just do a temporary fix they just throw Yeah, I'll just throw one of these boxes underneath. There we go, it's actually, it's actually pretty sturdy. Yeah, it's actually pretty sturdy, so yeah, that should work. Let's hook it up. So basically this is what it's going to look like, just like that. Well, it started snowing now, so I'm inside the garage now. Alright, everything is working. I just got to put these bars back in. As you can see, the light is blinking green, which is a good thing. I mean, it, it is working. If you go over to the head unit, it's got the pen optics option. Just click on that, you can see that it is working. Now I just gotta get on the water. Get in the water and test it out. I'm pretty excited guys. One thing I'm wondering, if you turn the locator off, the head unit off, I wonder if it will turn off the black box. As you can see, the light is blinking green. Let's go ahead, turn it off. Power it off. Okay, it is now powered off. Okay, let it stay in green. And okay, it turned off. Okay, so that's that's good. All right, guys, it is complete. It is complete, guys. This is the Bass King tripod. I just took the tripod off. This is a one inch cutting board which is just Velcro to the bottom. And then up here, I'm gonna use uh, the regular straps for the seats. I'm just gonna strap it in. Storage box. It's all hooked up by four screws, plus the screws for the black box. That's where the connectors go out. And for the live scope, all the way down here. 
connects this way and it goes in a bundle right here into the black box power cable network cable is coming out from the black box comes out this way power cable just goes into the ice hole power box the network cable comes underneath I'm still gonna protect this piece right here with some, with some cable protector it just goes under the H rail comes on to the back so that's pretty much it that's it guys If you guys like this installation video I know there's so many different ways of doing it but this is the way I'm, I'm doing it oh so I can still use for ice fishing and regular fishing on my kayak so this is more more of a interchangeable way that I'm hooking it up so this way so I can move the black box put it on the shuttle I use for ice fishing and, and whatnot so also stay tuned I'm gonna be doing a full review on the Bass King XL shuttle for the Garmin so, and also for the tripod. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you guys uh, haven't, make sure you guys subscribe to this video. Share and like this video. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.